All right, hello again, Honors 110 students. Um, thank you for tuning in to these videos. Um, from what I've seen, uh, I think our first discussion thread is going really well. Um, as a reminder, please be sure to leave a comment on there of some substance within one week um, of the class session it was scheduled for. Um, that will allow you to get uh, full credit for uh, attendance, engagement, and participation um, for that day. Um, and I'm also going to encourage people, we'll, we'll try to contain the discussion to within that one week period. Um, and I, I encourage people to respond sooner than later. Um, just for the purposes of fluidity of the discussion, I think the longer we wait, and especially if we were to go beyond one week, um, there's a real chance of people just kind of missing that there's additional content being added to those discussion threads. So uh, aim to comment within one week. And again, I, I encourage it sooner than later. Um, do your best. I know, again, many of you have, um, you know, different schedules, different obligations going on or different access to technology um, under our current unusual circumstances. So, you know, just, just do your best around that. But um, yeah, my expectation is you respond within a week um, from when the discussion thread goes up um, and when class would have ordinarily occurred. Um, in regards to those discussion thread comments, um, I, I haven't seen anyone um, do this to the point that I consider it egregious yet, uh, but I did want to put the word out there because I could imagine it going in this direction. Um, please don't settle for just copying content from your reading response journals and posting it um, into the discussion thread. Um, it's to be expected there will be some overlap uh, there. Um, but think of it as um, the journals being a chance for a little bit more in-depth reflection um, or kind of more holistic reflection in some cases. And think of it for the um, discussion thread um, to go into more particular points um, the way we probably would in a class discussion. Um, again, it's to be expected there will be some overlap. And if you were to copy you know, a key idea you think it would be really good for the whole class to hear from your journal. Um, th that's fair game, not necessarily going to police that. Um, but if the extent of your participation is just copying and pasting over your journal response, um, that's really not the intention of the discussion. There's kind of double dip in that way. So, so please make sure that if you are you know, kind of just copying and pasting content, that you're also putting in some original content as well. Um, and please keep me posted if you have questions about that. Um, again, for everyone who has participated in the discussion thread so far, um, you're doing what I would hope for you to do. I think doing it really nicely. So um, no need for for big change, uh, but just, you have that in mind. Um, the other thing I'm going to suggest is when we have multiple readings that we're discussing, um, leaving your thoughts in response to those different readings in separate posts. Um, even if you end up posting two comments right back to back um, against each other. Um, the reason I'm saying this is um, I think in terms of facilitating some discussion and back and forth um, in response to, to our ideas, that, that'll make it a little bit easier when we post kind of our thoughts, you know, for example, both on the Open Stanford reading and the Brock Meyer reading kind of in the same post. Uh, we have different people responding to different parts of it. And it gets a little bit messy to follow and I think a lot of us end up just posting a new comment when really it does intersect with, with a previous one. So um, again, this isn't to discourage anyone from participating and please don't feel a need to redo anything from last discussion, uh, but just moving forward, I'm going to encourage us to have um, separate, again, kind of comments pertaining to different readings, except where the ideas clearly overlap between multiple readings, in which case then, of course, it's fair game um, to combine them. I uh, hope that makes sense to folks. But again, this is a little bit of a, a work in progress as we all figure this out together. So please keep me posted uh, if you do have questions. Um Okay, a reminder, uh, essay number two is due Tuesday of next week. Um, again, ordinarily, if we had met in person today for class, I would have allotted a good 15, 20 minutes or so for um, peer review and for me to kind of go around the room and talk to people individually. Uh, we are kind of past the point when I can responsibly um, look at full drafts for people. But if people did want to still send me, um, you know, specific paragraphs they're concerned about or a thesis statement or, um, you know, uh, real bare bones kind of outline, I can still look at those for folks and give them feedback. Again, the sooner you get those to me, the more I can guarantee substantive feedback um, for you, um, and then I'll get it to you in time for you to actually be able to, to use it in constructive ways. Um, but okay, so with all that, let, let's go ahead and transition um, to today's reading. So um, again, I'm not going to kind of, you know, actually, you know, put the text on screen here, um, but I point you to specific passages from it or specific uh, elements of it that I think are, you know, worth us considering. And again, this won't be nearly as exhaustive as our in-class discussion would be, in part because I want to make sure to leave plenty of blanks for um, other people to be able to weigh in on the discussion. But with all that said, uh, the Hemingway piece is an interesting one from this perspective because I do tend to do a little bit more of a kind of guided discussion and, and leading into a little bit more lecture on this story. Um, 
And that's for a few reasons. Um, one is just kind of that it is a, a difficult story to make sense of if you haven't encountered it before. Um, I know some high schools, particularly some you know AP uh, literature classes, um, they do teach this. So some folks might already have an idea of what this piece was going into it. Um, but if you never encountered it before, um, I think it is a hard one to grapple with without a lot of outside context. So. Um, so for Hills Like White Elephants, um, the title actually gives us a lot of um, very subtle clues. Um, some of them more dated and, and some of them um, kind of, I think once we kind of process a little bit, we can make some more sense of. Um, so there's this idea of a white elephant um, in and of itself. And I imagine um, the most contemporary context that people may have uh, heard of this concept is it's a, it's a gift exchange that people tend to do around the holidays. Um, a white elephant or a Yankee swap, I think there's a few other um, names that are applied to it. But basically, it's this uh, gift exchange where everybody brings a gift, um, but it's something that's um, you know, sort of a joke or, or at least you know, relatively low in, in terms of the price tag attached to it or maybe a used item. Um, and it's kind of you know, wrapped up and people kind of you know, draw an order number and get to pick a gift and then the next person can choose to steal the gift or take a new one. Um, it goes around and around in cycles like that. So I imagine people have seen seen things like that. Uh, if anyone watches The Office, they had a, an episode uh, that, that, that had a gift exchange like this kind of gone very much awry. So um, in any event, um, I, that's a gateway into thinking about a white elephant. Um, really what this term means um, is something that uh, seems desirable. Um, this seems like it'd be really cool. Like someone says, you want a white elephant? And it's like, well, yeah, okay, that, that sounds like kind of a cool thing to have. I don't know anyone else who has that. Um, but once you actually start to get to practical matters, it's like, where would you actually keep this thing? Is this elephant going to live in your backyard? Or are you going to be able to fit him through the door to get into your house or your apartment or uh, any of that? And what are you going to feed this elephant, right? Uh, how are you going to take care of this elephant? It's just a wildly impractical thing, even though it might seem kind of desirable from the beginning. Um, another term used um, more contemporarily, but still it's kind of dated at this point, would be a pink Cadillac where um, it's a really cool sounding car, really unique, really expensive. Um, but at the same time, um, with it being so expensive and with it being so unusual, really hard to find parts for it. And it kind of breaks down all the time. So yeah, it seems like something you want, but once you kind of get into practical considerations surrounding it, you realize, I I'm not sure I really want this thing after all. Um, so with that, um, we talk about hills like white elephants. There's a very literal uh, moment in the story when they're, they're looking out at the hills and they you know, are described as looking like white elephants. So that's our tie-in with the, the context of the story. Um, but I think that there's a big uh, indicator there what Hemingway is really getting at is this idea of something that we might romanticize and we might think we want um, until we're on the cusp of having it and we realize that, that we don't really want it. Um, and to, to get into the, the general understanding of the story, there are, there are a few different interpretations out there, but the one that people generally tend to, to come to agree on um, is these two characters are talking about an abortion and the idea that they, they've been traveling together. Um, this white elephant obviously being the pregnancy or the child that, that would result from the pregnancy and something that, you know, that they think in the abstract or in the long term they might want, but in their present circumstance um, doesn't seem practical. Um, there's a reference to an operation on page two. Um, there's a repetition of saying it's the only thing that's made us unhappy. Um, and then the, the woman in the story says, once they take it away, um, you can never get it back. Um, all, all of these signs, and then there's some more kind of embedded in there, but the kind of, um, point us to this reading on um, that this is what they're talking about. Um, and again, this ties in a little bit to our discussion from last time around this idea of things that people, um, aren't comfortable talking about, even though they are really important, right? So these are two people, um, who have presumably had consensual sex. Um, there's an implication of, a age difference or at least a power differential and that he's referred to as the man she's referred to as the girl that's not quite parallel with each other um and yet they're, they're kind of talking around this issue um or talking about it in kind of coded terms with each other um there's also the fact that they're at this uh, train station for, for the majority of the story, an implication that they've got to make a choice. So they're, they're about to go uh, on a journey together. Um, so um, all of this kind of feeding into the, this kind of shared responsibility that they have. Um, so so you know, I, I laid out a lot of that story. Um, feel free to still weigh in on the discussion thread about other pieces you noticed or other theories about what's going on, other evidence that supports this read or, or potentially even another read. 
Um, and the, the one other big question I'll pose in relation to this story is um, why Hemingway would pose it this way. Um, and I gave away some of the answer already in, in my discussion of it, and we talked about it on our very first class day with the six-word story that Hemingway had written about how he was kind of a minimalist in terms of um, you know saying a lot with as few words as he could. Um, so th those are certainly pieces of it, um, but I'd suggest there, there might be some more that we can dig into about um, why this is communicated uh, the way that it is. Um, okay, so the other story um, that we had was the, the Justin Taylor one, uh, Sun Gold. Um, so for this one, um, I'm going to leave it a little more open-ended, um, but to take it just to a few specific places, um, I did want to kind of ask about kind of our read on our narrator's ethics, um, kind of who he is, how he sees the world, uh, how he sees women, how he sees relationships, um, and how that might compare, contrast um, to Ethan, um, the manager um, of this pizza shop where he's working. Um, there's also the, the, the point here that um, we, we open the story with um, these char this character, our narrator, um, in a mushroom suit. Right. Um, and to, to be kind of blunt at the risk of being a little over the top with this, um, I think the, the degree to which he's described as being dressed up like a mushroom, um, it's hard not to read that um, as a phallic image. Right. That, um, that basically he is um, sort of a dick in this moment. Excuse my strong language there. Um, but so um, kind of I want to unpack a little bit um, why we think this choice is made as well, right? especially as a starting point for the story. Um, the mushroom suit does recur throughout the story. It is it is important to it in some ways, um, but it's naturally the most important thing. Right? These characters, I think Sun Gold, um, I think all this is in some ways, you know, more important to the story. Um, but, but, you know, why we start there, why it's kind of a recurring image, what, what kind of sense we make of it. Uh, uh, beyond that, um, on page 31, um, these characters are, are talking pretty bluntly um, about sex. Um, it happens at the bottom of page 33 as well. Um, and I'm curious what we make of this, the way that they talk about sex, kind of what that tells us about these characters, about the culture that they exist in. Um, I'll, I'll be transparent. Um, as people, I don't very much like these characters. Um, I do find the story interesting. I find the story kind of provocative. Um, not necessarily my favorite read that we're, we're looking at this semester, um, but nonetheless, um, I think there's something to be said about um, how um, the narrator in particular kind, kind of looks at sex, how he looks at himself, how he looks at women. Um, yeah, we see him use that, that Melissa slash Jessica descriptor. Um, what, what's up with that, right? What, what sense can we make of that? What does that tell us about this narrator? Um, and seeing what sense we can make from all that. Um, let's see. And then, um, let's see, on page 40, um, the second half of the last paragraph, um, he talks about what, what this person's name actually is. Um, he describes her as rife with specific attributes um, and kind of what, what we can make of that moment. So, um, okay, I'm going to leave, again, that, that pretty open-ended from there. So, again, in the discussion thread, please feel free to weigh in uh, on the Hemingway and or the Taylor. But, again, please try to keep those in separate discussion th uh, comments there um, so we can kind of thread those comments and, and follow our discussion uh, fr from there. But I'm really interested to hear what people think about um, the relationship dynamics at, at play in these stories, um, how kind of these characters, especially in Sun Gold's kind of individual identities affect um, their view on relationships and, and prospective partners and other people, um, as well as themselves, and kind of what, what else we might pull from here. Again, there, there's plenty of more information to kind of mine here from the text, so feel free you know, to make it your own and go in some other directions as well. Um, okay, so um, to, to wrap up for this time, though, um, so again, for essay number two, again, not, not to beat a dead horse, but due um, Tuesday, um, I'm going to try to adjust what, what the due uh, time is on Canvas, because um, again, feel free to turn in a little bit later in the day uh, if you need to. Again, I recognize with different circumstances, it's going to play out in different ways for different people. So if you have to get in that essay, you know, um, a couple hours behind our usual um, time of start of class, I'm okay with that in this instance, and we'll, we'll kind of adjust accordingly uh, around all that. But again, encourage encourage you um, to look out for uh, other people to work with in terms of exchanging papers, someone to read over what you're thinking, you know, for peer review kind of purposes. Um, and if you uh, are looking for a partner and, and don't have anyone in class you're kind of connected to already, feel free to leave a comment in the discussion thread about that as well uh, to connect with each other uh, for that purpose. Um, and the last thing I'm, I'm going to note for uh, today's video lecture is um, my plan for next class on Tuesday. Um, there's no reading assigned for it. Um, what we would do in classes 
um, I would screen an episode of a TV show for us, and then we would have a discussion uh, centered around that that deals with a number of aspects of relationships, sex, and love, um, some of which we're not really getting at um, in other readings for the class. Um, I, I would be streaming it via Netflix. Um, and so um, I am interested in, in still having you all watch that episode. Um, if you do not have a Netflix account and that would present any sort of you know financial hardship for you, um, do not feel obligated to do that. I think what, what I'm loosely planning to do is uh, point you towards a specific episode that I'm thinking of um, and then uh, posing some discussion questions about it like I ordinarily would, but then it's up to you um, to... to um, ideally watch that episode and then respond, but if you're not able to watch that episode, I think you can still respond to most of the questions I'm thinking about just based on your own kind of, you know, worldview and experiences and thoughts. Um, so, so we can still have the discussion to that extent anyway. But just as a preview for next time, and I know some people were a little bit antsy about there's no reading. Are we still even having class? What's going on? Um, it's going to be a little even stranger given this online format, but but that's what we're looking towards to for next time. Um, okay, th thank you all for watching, um, and I'll talk to you all soon.